Okay, this is part three. Um, I promise to stay on point. I'm not going to go into a bunch of deep uh, explanations. You guys are smart. You can figure out what I'm trying to say. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, someone left a comment on the first video. Yes, the first video. Um, that it was hard to see with the red, and I agree. When I was looking at it on my phone, the blue, I put all the Strong's definitions in the blue, and up against the red, they kind of blur out, and it's hard to read them. So, I changed the color to, this is like an indigo blue, so, uh, to make it easier to read. So, let's just, since we're approaching this, day. Let's just look at some of these because, you know, I haven't mentioned them. Um, so, in the Hebrew, 9-11 means separation. We know there's going to be a separation of the sheep and the goats. Now, that verse specifically is speaking about on Judgment Day when he separates the two groups, meaning those who are, are damned and those who are not. Uh, and then every, the two groups go to their perspective rightful places. Uh, but we also know that the wheat and the tares are going to be separated when the rapture happens. Um, because the tares will be bundled up and burned, and the wheat will go into the storehouse. So, that's pertinent. Um, Hebrews 119, there's the red, or the ruddy, uh, I mentioned him. The last video about how the that scarlet was, you know, the color scarlet or red, which of course has to do with the shed blood of Yeshua, is mentioned. Um, so, do you see what I'm saying? The the definitions of these strong numbers, which pertain to these dates, are tied. They're all pertinent. Uh, Hebrews seven eleven is purple or red purple. And the red purple is also referred to as a scarlet color. Purple, for those who are unaware, was associated with royalty. Uh, only the royal people would wear purple because it was to get the dye to make the purple clothing was very, very hard to get. They had to get, use a snail, which I had to go out and catch, and then <laughs> get this purple color dye from these snails and it took a lot of processing so of course made uh, the fabrics that were dyed purple much more valuable which they reserve for royalty a and we know that our king is royalty um, Hebrews 117 I'm doing it the reason the, the backwards is because Hebrew is read from right to left so 117 means majestic also having to do with our king. In the Greek, 911 means to dip or immerse or dye. There's another dyeing of the purple fabric. Or to dip means to baptize. And in 119, which is the 911 backwards in the Greek, is a contest, a struggling. <laughs> That's our walk. As a believer, We the contest is running the race. And the struggling is our trials and tribulations that we were promised we would have if we followed him. You have to count the cost, because it is a struggle, as we all know. Um, in the Greek, 7-Eleven, which is, you know, for September being the seventh month, 11th day, best counseling, which is, you know, best meaning better than not good. <laughs> Meaning, the Holy Spirit gives us best counseling. Uh, the Word. And Greek 117, which is the, the opposite, is Athenian. So there's the, the men of Athens again. Um, these over here are the same because of, uh, on Torah calendar, uh, the days are the same. So these over here are the same as the Gregorian. Uh, the Julian calendar that is, 13 days behind, as of now. Um, I know this is not August 11th, but the way they count things, and they uh, there's even a video of, I forget what her name is, the woman, I don't know if she is still the head of the International 
monetary fund, the IMF. Um, I don't, but anyway, a couple years ago, she actually told people how they count numbers, how they add things together. She actually, <laughs> you know, she came right out and said, this is how we look at numbers, you know, that they add the numbers together to get, so anyway, August being the eighth month on the Gregorian and the two and the nine is 11. So that's where I get the 11. Um, 811 in the Hebrew means a cluster like a cluster of grapes, uh, which is pertinent to the end times because the grapes will be trampled in the wine vat. During the Great Tribulation, Yeshua will trample them to get the blood out. You know, the, uh, the juice, the grape juice that comes from stomping the grapes, pressing the grapes, is referred to as the blood, the bl blood of the vine. So anyway, that's pertinent. Um, Hebrews 118, doing it with the, the way the runners have on their shirts, means the fifth son of Haman, or Haman. He's the Antichrist type in the book of Esther. Uh, in the Greek, 811 is wastefully or prodigally. That's someone who is living their life. They're just throwing away their inheritance, which is what the prodigal son did because they wanted it now. Uh, so this means living a, a, a wasteful prodigal life. These are those who are not saved or who are backslidden, people who are in the world. In the Greek, 118, to contend or struggle, which is actually the same thing is 119 and you'll find that that's the case when you look up strongest numbers sometimes the ones that are one or even two sometimes even more than two uh, numbers apart from each other they have the same root meaning um, Hebrews 2 9 because of the 29th day I was supposed to I think that I think I left out the eight yeah that's supposed to be eight let me just go ahead and put that in. Um, well, let me just... Well, no, I don't want to cover up that. Okay. Uh, anyway, so Hebrews 8.29 for the 8th month, 29th day means a good p piece of flesh, a measured portion. And in the Greek, 8.29 is self-pleasing, which has to do with uh, living a prodigal lifestyle. And here, the Julian that is was originally 10 days behind when they switched from the Julian to the Gregorian. Uh, in the Greek, 7-1 seven, seven means to lead, bring, carry, or go. Which is tied to strong 726, which is Harpazo. And in Matthew 26, 46, that is where Yeshua is in the garden praying. And he comes back to John, James, and Peter, who had fallen asleep for the third time. He went. He walked a few a little ways away, the stones threw away to pray. And he comes back three different times and finds them asleep. And he says, can't you stay awake for one hour and pray with me? And the third time he comes back, he says, you know, don't worry about it. Rise up is what he says. The rising up is, is this G71. Rise up. And let us take our rest. I'm paraphrasing because that's not exactly what he says, but you, I'm sure you've read it. And that is at the midnight hour when they come to arrest him. At that very moment is when he says this, rise up and take your rest. So that's uh, tied to the rapture. I'm not saying the rapture is going to happen tomorrow. I'm just saying he's giving us a heads up, like I said in the first video. Okay. Elu 28, this is the Anakian calendar which is 6 month, 28th day. In the Hebrew, 628 means mixed multitude, gathered together. This is in Revelation... Oh, I'm sorry, I forget which chapter that is. Is it 4 or 5? I don't remember. Where the mixed multitude is in heaven with their palm branches, praising the Lord, because they were taken out of, out from the tribulation. Uh, and then I just reversed it, 286, because if you read from right to left, um, you would read the 6th month and then the 28th day, just like I showed 
in the last video where um, in Europe they put the day before the month. So Hebrews 2.8.6 means a child's brother. We are called children of God and our brother is Yeshua, Jesus. He says, I am your brother, but he's also our father and our friend. Uh, in the Greek, 628 means to wash away. In other words, to make clean. He washes away our sins with the shedding of his blood. And 286 is a lamb. I mean, do you see how even those are, these are opposite numbers? They're not even who and see, they're not even the exact same, but look at how they connect. That's what's so amazing. Um, and then I showed this over here with the purple and the majestic mighty one. And one with the capital letters, that was in Bible Hub. And the strong is the mighty one. It was capital like that. And we know who the mighty one is. And the Greeks, oh, okay, I already did this. Best counseling in the Athenians or men of Athens. Um, on the Jewish calendar, it's the six month 11th day tomorrow or 6 11. And Hebrew 6.11 means evil, mischief, or harm. And it's interesting because, unfortunately, the, the, the majority of the meanings, the Strong's meanings on the Jewish side, I've noticed, are not good. And, uh, yeah. So, Hebrews 1.16, which is 6.11 backwards, means now, that time. In other words... The time we've been looking for. And in the Greek, 611 means I answer. Um, we've been crying out saying, how long, Lord? When are you coming? You know, how much longer? And he's, this is just what I see as I read these definitions. He's getting ready to answer us. Um... And in the Greek, 116 is Athens. It's a plural of Athena, which is a goddess of wisdom. That's just a different spelling. That might be the Greek spelling, but it's Athena. The Greek goddess. Just another, like I mentioned in the first video about the Parthenon. And, um, I, a couple days ago, I just want to interject real quick. A couple days ago, I watched, I watched, the Superman versus Batman movie, and I've seen I'd seen it before. And that movie's chock full of all kinds of end times, getting ready for the pit to open stuff. I mean, it's chock full. There's even a painting on the wall that Lex Luthor points to, and he even says that the devils don't come from beneath; they come from the air. Meaning. The fallen angels coming from the air, or, you know, coming in disguises, ETs. And there is, I don't know who did the painting, but, you know, there's, there's the fallen angels in the painting. And the leader of them. Uh, but anyway, the reason I brought that movie up, because at one point in time, when he invites all these people to his lair, to his place where he is, his um, corporation, these people, to they're, they're bakers. You can tell they're bakers, and they walk by with a cake. And it's and they they just if you're not paying attention, you'll you'll go right by you, and you won't even really notice it because they just slip them in there real nonchalantly. But they're there for a reason, and the cake that they're carrying is either. <laughs> Made in the shape of the Parthenon or is Lincoln Memorial? Either one, because Lincoln Memorial looks a lot like the, the Parthenon. And I'm, I was like, are you kidding me? Okay. So, that's why I, I brought that up, because of the Athena thing. Uh, okay, so that's um, tomorrow. Those are the meanings. And, and there's probably more. Like, I didn't put the... Oh, I didn't put the Hebrew here, because I forget what it was. You can go look it up yourself if you're if you're that so inclined. 
but what I want to point to, and I want to, I have to at least start on it because it's very, very important. So as you see, I didn't do anything here for the 12th or the 13th. So going on down, um, let's start here with the 14th. Supposedly this is the night that the moon is full. Now, I now have three witnesses and I will try to remember to put the links to the videos because I'm, I'm getting tired. Uh, to these witnesses, um, the channel, The Final Days, this woman is excellent and she looks at the images from the uh, FAA webcams in Alaska and you can, the way, she, the thing she shows, because she just goes through them all until she catches something that they missed. Or maybe they purposely left it in for us to find, but it's undeniable. I, I just, I firmly believe, and you can disagree if you want, that's okay, but I firmly believe that it's, there is proof in her videos that there's, they have technology up there that is hiding stuff. Uh, with projectors and mirrors and all this kind of stuff. Then, and they've, they've put out videos that practically say that that's what they've done. Um, and there's all kinds of channels. Jeff P's channel. Um, the other witness was our, um, our sister waiting for Jesus Christ, who goes out and films the full moon. And she's shown an, a couple of different videos of uh, the, the the light that is what we th are thinking is the full moon when we look up at it and then she has to focus in a certain way to be able to see any features because if you don't all you see is this big light like the Sun and then right beside it is the full image of the moon and the reason I believe that it's not like some kind of reflection or lens it's, it's not a reflection. In my opinion, I don't, I'm not a camera expert, but in my opinion, I don't think that it's a reflection of what she's filming because it's not lit up. There's no light on it. I mean, there's, there's some, but I think the only light that's being, that it, that is illuminating from it is what's coming from the artificial light that she is actually filming. And she has a couple of videos up to show that. Then the third witness came yesterday. Casey from Enter the Stars. Um, did He put up two videos yesterday about how hologram technology has been around since the 70s. And so, and when I look up at the moon, I see stuff that is like, that's not normal. I see blue ring around it, which our sister from Waiting for Jesus Christ actually captured in her video you could see on one side a red ring the other side a blue so it is my full belief well, I, I couldn't say that 100 percent but i'm pretty sure that and one of the ways we know that the enemy is um already messed up the calendars the word says that he will seek to change times and laws and of course he'll probably I have no doubt we'll do that again once he takes over during the tribulation. But he's already been messing it up because he doesn't want Yah's people to know when the correct day, time is to worship him properly by keeping his feast days and his commandments and all that stuff. Which, we're not under the law, I know that, we're under grace, but the Jews who don't know Yeshua are still trying to keep the law. And even though they're misguided because they've been blinded in part, they're still trying to be obedient to the Father. If they are a true godly person and not a Pharisee or a Jew from the synagogue of Satan. So, I firmly believe that the enemy has messed up things so much so they to make sure everybody's not on track so we won't be, we won't know the right time. Oh Lord, please pray for me. Anyone listening to this video, please, I pray, I plead the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach over this video and over myself because what I say in my videos, the enemy hates. And that's why I keep getting attacked. I keep, every time I put up videos, I get attacked. So please pray for me. 
that the enemy be bound in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, because I'm doing Abba's will by warning his people, but the enemy doesn't want me to do that. So anyway, what they say is the full moon, I am convinced is the opposite. And the reason I say that is because the, the Holy Spirit led me to um, revise by three days the Enochian calendar that I was looking at, and it was confirmed by another Enochian calendar online after I changed it to a certain date, and I will show you that probably in the next video because this one's already getting long. So when they say it's a full moon, I think it's I think there's a hologram up there we think is the moon and the real moon is in the opposite phase in other words when they say it's full it's the dark phase or the new moon phase when it's dark can't prove that but that's just a feeling from so many things regarding um the knocking calendar and i will promise i promise i'm going to start with that in the next video because it's kind of detailed everything i do is detailed i'm sorry um so let's go through these numbers quickly and then I'm going to end this one. So on the 14th it's 714 and in the Greek 714 means sufficient or enough. It also means you can go look it up uh, to have like great strength. Um, this is the word that uh, the father said to Paul when Paul asked him to remove the thorn that was plaguing him and causing him distress. He and he, he asked him three times, and the Lord said three times, My grace is sufficient for thee. In other words, you're supposed to suffer. Deal with it. This is part of the, this is part of the plan. Sorry, Paul. Just be glad that you have my grace because of the things you've done. And that goes for all of us. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So, um, so you know, that's pertinent. And then here's... Uh, it's September 1st on the 13 days behind Julian and H Hebrew 71 means a river near Damascus which is in the Song of Solomon chapter 4 verse 8 it's not the river itself but it refers to Am Amana or Amana which is one of the mounts that Yeshua takes probably the 144,000, his bride, because um, it's mentioned in here, he, in Song of Solomon, he takes his bride on the top of all these mounts, because the top of the mountain is the exalted place. It's where the Most High is. It, you know, the top of a mountain, you can't get any higher unless you're in heaven. So, it's a place of authority. And that's where his bride goes with him, in, mentioned in Song of Solomon. Um, in the Greek, it means to lead, bring, or carry, <laughs> which I think I covered up here. Yes, right here. And uh, on the ten days behind, it's seven four. My father is a lamp. We know that's true. He's 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 a lamp unto our feet he's guiding our path that's exactly what he's doing by showing us all this stuff um in the greek it's a contest and this contest means um it has to do with great fear or anxiety and and the the example it gave was um someone that's about to enter a competition how they have that anxiety and, but of course, this would have to do with the tribulation coming or for fear of things coming upon the earth. On the Enochian calendar, it is the fall equinox. And this is so, so, so important, but I can't get into it right now because it's, it's deep. And I just, he just revealed this to me a couple days ago. So I will definitely explain this in the next part. Please watch that one. If nothing else, that's probably going to be the most important one. Watch part four, I guess it will be. Uh, which will be tomorrow on the 11th at some point. Y'all willing. Um, but this has to do with time being reset and first and second Passover. Explaining what I uh, explained in my video with the chart 
It's called Yeshua's Long Day. And what the Holy Spirit revealed to me, not that I'm the authority on these things, but this is what he showed me. And I'm sharing it with you um, about what really happened on the day of crucifixion. Because so many people, there's so much debate about how many days was in the tomb and what day he was crucified and what day he rose and all that stuff. And it's just amazing um, the journey that he took me on to show me this. I did a video just about this. It's called A Gift for Those Who Asked in my playlist if you care to see that. Um, but on the knocking calendar wheel, this comes into play and it happens right here on the 15th which is his birthday it's Tishri 1 on the Enochian calendar or Feast of Trumpets but on Torah calendar it's the first day of Tabernacle so these are two feast days that are right next to each other on this but on the same day so you see see the connection there uh, oh gosh, you guys, just, there's, there's so many details, I'm so sorry, I just can't do a quick 15 minute video, but if you really want to see the deeper meanings of things that are hidden in his word, then these videos are for you. I know people have, and I know most of you who are subscribed to my channel like that I do it that way, but they're, you know, for those who want some quick kind of video just because you're watching videos, and trying to get as much information as you can, and you don't want to watch a long one, then you're going to miss a lot of stuff here. So, okay, we're at 28 minutes already, so I'm going to have to um, cut this off so somebody will watch it. Uh, let me just finish up here with um, these two boxes, and then tomorrow I will get into this, because this is so important. Um... Another, okay, I didn't, I did the Greek over here and the Hebrew over here for Psalm 14. Uh, Psalm 14 is the name Ard, actually it's Ardon, I think it was Ardon, which is a descendant of Benjamin, but the Ard, his name, the root of his name, means I shall subdue, which Yeshua comes busting through the atmosphere, the enemy's gonna be subdued until he takes his, people out of here. They're, they're not going to be able to do nothing until, because in Revelation it says so. The angels that are holding back the four winds, they can't do anything until the 144,000 are sealed. So they're being subdued. Um, and it's interesting that it's a descendant of Benjamin, because Benjamin is the only full brother of Joseph. And Joseph is a type and shadow of Yeshua. When you read um, about Joseph, you can see the type and shadow of Yeshua there. As a matter of fact, all the important people in the Bible are all a type and shadow. Just look. Next time you read about anybody, all the prophets, all the major prophets, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, they're all a type and shadow of Yeshua. Job. <laughs> um, but of course we know Benjamin was his, his only full brother. The one who is closest genetically to him because they both had the same mother and father. His other ten brothers, yes, yes, his other ten brothers all had the same father but different mothers. So Benjamin is a type and shadow of the bride because he's closest to Joseph and being he's the baby, so Joseph, you know, looked after him. Um, He's the one that he held back when his brothers went to Egypt looking for food. And they didn't know it was him. He held back Benjamin as like collateral so that his brothers would come back and bring his father with them. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. On the Jewish calendar, it's Elul 14 or 614. Which means an end gathering or harvest, and this end gathering is another name for the Feast of Tabernacles, which is right here. So, do you see, guys? This is this, these meanings are here specifically for a reason. And then in the Greek, it means hidden. 
I believe that the bride is going to be hidden when she meets Yeshua in the air. When he busts through and calls the bride up, she has to have her veil on. The bride does not go before the groom without her veil on. Now, they don't do it so much these days, but um, read Genesis 24 about Rebecca at the very end of the chapter when she goes with Eliezer to meet Isaac. He's in the field, and she's like, who is that? And Eliezer says, that's my master. And she, it says she puts a veil on, and the word for veil is kasa, which is the root word of kese, which in Psalm 81.3 is called the full moon. So, see, I, this is why, like I said, I can't do short videos, because I have, there's too, too many, too many details, and I have to share them all, because they're so amazing. We're supposed to know these things. So anyway, I'm going to cut this off, guys, because it's um, already 33 minutes. So, um, promise I will talk about this stuff in the next video and this, because this is, this is the time we need to be watching. And I just want to mention real quick, in Amos 3, there's a rap, they're, they're all like rapture verses. So go read Amos 3. So when we talk about it, in the next video you'll see. So anyway, um, yeah. And then here's the seven one again. Because see how they keep popping up because these dates keep. So he's keeping us going with the leading away. I'm getting ready to lead you away. I'm getting ready to bring you and carry you. He's he's saying keep going. You're almost there. You're almost at the finish line. All right, that's enough. I love you guys. Um, part four up on the eleventh at some point in time. Okay, thank you so much for being here. I love you all so much. And I will see you in the next video. Shalom.